Dear ICS members and guests, thank you for this uh, exciting opportunity to present our uh, research. Doctor, please move a little closer to the microphone. Oh. Thank you very much. Uh, my name is Amy Dobberful. I'm a uh, urologist from the United States. So here are affiliations. We have no conflicts in relation to the content of this presentation. So some acknowledgments. This data was collected from an IRB approved from the men treated at the Albany Medical College in uh, Albany, New York. And this work was conducted as part of my KL2 Scholars program. So some background on underactive bladder. The diagnosis is typically made in the setting of urinary retention and elevated post-void residual. It can often be idiopathic or the sequela of bladder outlet obstruction, neurologic injury, or poorly controlled diabetes. Symptoms are not specific and may include hesitancy, frequency, sensation of incomplete emptying, and straining. In 2019, the ICS updated their definition for detrusor underactivity uh, in their male terminology of lower urinary tract symptoms. Late diagnosis of underactive bladder and detrusor underactivity is a problem. It is suggested uh, to potentially be irreversible at the time of diagnosis. Our aim of the study was to improve patient counseling in men with detrusor underactivity considering a bladder outlet deobstructive procedure. So we sought to identify clinical neurodynamic factors associated with spontaneous voiding in men with detrusor underactivity and suspected obstruction who underwent a outlet deobstruction procedure. It's our population. We identified 614 men uh, who underwent an outlet deobstruction procedure over a nine-year period. 131 underwent preoperative urodynamic evaluation prior to surgery. Uh, from this 131, we conducted a two-reviewer chart review of uh, character baseline characteristics as well as a urodynamic tracing review uh, prior to surgery. And then all cases were quantified by the ability to achieve spontaneous voiding, so that means no intermittent or indwelling catheter requirement before and after surgery. This also included urofluometry and AUA symptom and quality of life scores. This yielded 122 men with chart-reviewed verified preoperative urodynamics. We quantified the bladder outlet obstruction index, as you see here. Uh, index greater than 40 is generally classified as obstructed. Uh, we also quantified the bladder contractility index uh, with uh, less than 100 for the purpose of this study, classified as detrusor underactivity. Our primary outcome was the ability to spontaneously void after surgery without the need for intermittent or indwelling catheter. Data were analyzed in SAS uh, for the strata of bladder contractility in the subgroups, which I'll share with you shortly. Um, variables of interest were analyzed with chi-square, t-test, and logistic regression, and data are presented as mean and standard deviation. So out of 131 men who underwent urodynamics, 122 had tracings for review with a mean age of 68. Diabetes and UTI were present about a quarter. Uh, alpha blockers are used in 80%, 5 ARI in 40%, and they had a mean AUA symptom score of 18 and quality of life of 3.7, and a mean Qmax of 7.8 with a residual of 209 cc's. So we found that in this group of 122, uh, D, which uh, defined as uh, BCI less than 100, was identified in 54%. Um, of the men with DU, 68% uh, were able to spontaneously void prior to surgery. In those without uh, DU, 82% were voiding before surgery. The type of surgery you ask, the uh, majority of these were uh, TERP or TERP in saline. Uh, DU was offered to patients if they had uh, clinical obstruction, excuse me, surgery was offered to patients with DU if there was a uh, stigmata of clinical obstruction, trabeculation, bi or trilobe, or hypertrophy, or urodynamic confirmation. Um, in this population, we did not offer uh, two neurogenic, or, uh, for instance, spinal stenosis patients. So our mean post-operative follow-up was 6.4 months. 79% uh, of men with DU were able to voice spontaneously compared to their preoperative 68%. And 96% of men with BCI more than 100 were able to void spontaneously. Logistic regression for our baseline characteristics was performed, which you can see here. 
Uh, the factors that were significant included the ability to void preoperatively spontaneously was associated as well as the reduced post-void residual preoperatively. Not significant, you see here is age, diabetes, UTI, alpha blocker, 5 ARI, the uh, symptom score, Qmax, and voided volume. On logistic regression of the urodynamic factors for the outcome spontaneous voiding, we found that Qmax uh, and PDA to Qmax were both uh, associated with spontaneous voiding. Um, the absence of underactivity was associated with spontaneous voiding, and the presence of obstruction. So this is where we'll explore our uh, cases a little more. So stratifying all of our uh, results by the BCI cut point of 100, uh, these are all of our baseline characteristics here. The only non-neurodynamic characteristic that was significantly different to baseline between the groups was the AUA quality of life score. Looking at our urodynamic parameters, we found that the weak bladders, so those with BCI less than 100, had a uh, greater bladder capacity PVR and the presence of abdominal straining, and reduced presence of DO, uh, the PETA, QMAX, QMAX, and uh, bladder outlet obstruction index. Interestingly, in this group, only 32%, so 21 out of 66, met the urodynamic uh, criteria for obstruction, so B, uh, buoy greater than 40. Looking at our follow-up uh, outcomes, uh, so AUA symptom score, quality of life, QMAX, and PBR improved in uh, both groups after surgery. The scores were more symptomatic, though, in the DU group. Looking at our baseline characteristics for the underactive bladders, now stratifying them by the obstruction index cut point of 40, um, so we found no significant difference in any of the baseline characteristics. Uh, what we did find is that on neurodynamics, the underactive or the ditches underactive bladders were, which were not obstructed by pressure flow criteria, they had a lower prevalent uh, presence of ditches or activity. They had a greater urodynamic maximum flow rate and lower ditches or pressure at maximum flow. Uh, when looking at our outcomes uh, for those uh, for this strata. We found no significant difference in any of the follow-up characteristics for the weak bladders with or without urodynamic obstruction. Now, a very important group are those who were unable to void before surgery, but also unable to void after surgery. Uh, so here we've stratified all of their preoperative characteristics, and we found no difference in any of the baseline characteristics. We also found no difference in any of the urodynamic characteristics between those who are able to void uh, after surgery who were unable to void beforehand. Now, interestingly, in those men with a weak bladder who were unable to void before surgery, 12 out of 21, so 57%, were able to benefit from the deobstructive procedure. So some limitations. Uh, this is a retrospective study. Uh, selection bias is certainly something to consider. Not all men with d underactivity on neurodynamics underwent surgery. This is a long time frame of uh, nine years for this many patients over which neurodynamics and interventions were performed. And uh, the surgeries were performed by a heterogeneous group of providers according to their standard practice. Our strengths, however, are the simplicity and critical relevance of our primary outcome, spontaneous voiding. And charts were reviewed directly. Uh, There's a relatively large number of patients for this type of study with a relatively large number of men with DU. Um, and a mean follow-up, we feel like 6.4 months is sufficient for assessing the ability to uh, spontaneously void after surgery. So for discussion, we found a reasonable probability of spontaneous void following surgery despite the presence of DU. In men with DU and no obstruction by pressure flow criteria, there's a non-significant lower rate of postoperative spontaneous voiding, 73 versus 90%. Um, and surprisingly, in those with a weak bladder, unable to void uh, prior to surgery, 57% were able to benefit from deobstruction. So based on our findings, we think it may be reasonable to offer men with uh, poor contractility on neurodynamics a deobstructive outlet procedure, even if the outlet does not meet the urodynamic threshold of obstruction. So just in conclusion, uh, counseling should certainly take into all patient factors, uh, preoperative spontaneous voiding, flow, bladder contractility, and assess the patient really as a whole. 
Um, spontaneous voiding, as we know, is higher in patients with normal contractility and obstruction. Uh, outlet procedure is still an option with a reasonable chance of success. So if anyone wants to direct any questions, we actually just published this about two weeks ago. Um, <clears throat> you can find our paper here. Uh, please direct any questions to me by email. Or Thank you. Thanks, Amy. Uh, questions open? Daniel Moser from Brazil. Uh, Ms. Daberfo, do you think that would be reasonable in your opinion and your group opinion to stratify DU like under 50 and between 50 and 100? Do you think that would be changed in your results? This is the first question. And the second one, uh, did you use TURP right in these patients? TURP? Do you think that uh, with a nucleation of prostate, would you have better results? Mm, those are excellent questions. So the first question, just to repeat to make sure I understand it, is uh, why did we select the 100 cut point versus would it be different if we looked at the cut point of uh, BCI of uh, 50? Yeah. Um, yeah, well, one thing that I'm, I'm always thinking about mm -hmm. and proposing to ICS, maybe stratify DU, because it's different, a patient with DU with uh, uh, index under 50 and maybe one between 50 and 100. Mm -hmm. Do we agree with that? I, I would agree. I think we need to think about BCI as a continuum, not a uh, single cut point. So what, what's important to temper off this information is all of these patients were able to generate a contraction and void even a small amount to time of urodynamics. So this does not include patients who were 100% acontractile. So, mm -hmm. um, and then your second question about the uh, the terp, uh, the whole up versus yeah yeah you don't use a lot of nucleation in the US right? It it wasn't a part of this study and also not a standard practice. At this uh, but your impression, what your your impression of that? Do you think that maybe? Uh, less uh, resistance or take out more outlet resistance? Uh, in my personal practice, I don't perform HOLAP. I tend to offer simple prostatectomy, um, but it's certainly something I think that is an important modality if okay. you're skilled enough to do okay, so. Okay, thank you so much. <laughs> thank you. Next, next question, please. Okay, thank you, Amy. Um, as always, wonderful research and, and, and excellent, and we should discuss the tools of activity and voiding function a whole week during ICS. I think that it should be nothing but that. Having said that, I, I, I agree with your cautious, let's say, take home message in the abstract and here. And um, what I'm a, a little bit, what I think is confusing, both in your abstract and, and, and in your article, is that you do the in between group comparison, and you concentrate on that, and you do not very much report on on outcome analysis. So if you put the group together and you define a precise outcome, which is, let's say, excellent voiding, good flow rate, no residual, and then you see, and, and then you have a chi-square graph with good voiding and bad voiding or no voiding, I'm afraid that, uh, that there will be uh, another difference between between what you uh, what you have. So I think that would lead to other conclusions if you I, do the analysis that way. Too too many subgroup analyses can lead to false uh, so, finding false differences. And then you conclude about the subgroup D B O O between below 40 with underactivity. I think. That's five patients or so in your database? No. Obstruction, sorry, repeat the question. So uh, again, we should continue this research and, and, and your conclusion is that treatment should be individualized. So Absolutely. next year you have 600 patients and not 122 out of 600. Is that, uh, am I understanding correctly? Correct. So as a standard Good. practice, not everyone had your dynamics beforehand. So, Dr. Blavis. Jerry Blavis from New York, and thank you for a very detailed study. I appreciate it. Uh, first, I have a couple of points. I'm surprised that you were surprised that so many people voided. I'm surprised that more didn't. 
Mm. So we published um, a similar series to this um, using pretty much the same data. We had nearly 100% of the patients void. And I just wonder, especially since it was, um, and it was, it was, I think it was 98% of patients with underactive bladder, whether they were obstructed or whether they were not obstructed, voided well, and our follow-up was for a year. Um, I wonder, since it w the, the surgeries were done by a number of different doctors, um, I think it's possible that many of them just didn't do, didn't have the heart in the surgery. I know when I was first starting out uh, back in the in the 80s, when we talked, when we did bladder neck obstruction with primary bladder neck obstruction, and I, you know when you're just starting out, you refer the patient back to the primary care doctor, and they would just do the surgery and take a couple of chips and tell the patient they did, the, you know. It's too bad it failed. Then the patient would come back to me, we'd do a TERP, and they'd be fine. I suspect that has something to do with this. Um, I, question, did, did, what people with eight contractile bladders, did you offer them TERPs in this uh, series? Some of the uh, practice of the faculty in this group that was offered, but yet that's not a part of this. Now, the only risk factor mm -hmm. that we found mm -hmm. for, uh, for not voiding was an eight contractile bladder, mm -hmm. but even forty, per, even half of those voided. Mm -hmm. So my take-home message is is the same as yours, except for be aggressive and make sure you do a good job with the uh, with the prostate and keep up the research. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you.